12 edgy action-packed 90s cartoons, extreme era of animation. In terms of TV animation, the 90s brought us stuff that was equal parts unconventional and addictive, from extreme violence and disastrous characters to beautifully crafted fight sequences and gripping plots, this decade gave us a bit of everything. Guess we should have gotten permits for the tour. Let's clear out, people. These TV shows pack generous amounts of exoskeletons and mech suits, monstrous heroes and villains, mythological and mystical plots, and most importantly, aesthetically rich and vibrant animation. We wouldn't be wrong in saying that what was provided was a much needed bridge, reducing the gap between kids centric cartoons and ones aimed at adults. After the 90s were over, there came a radical and dramatic shift in the way cartoons were made and viewed, and adult viewership became a luxury that's enjoyed even today than by animation creators. The introduction of CGI alongside live action sequences and cartoons gained prominence in the 90s, and the 2021 movie Tom and Jerry is the latest direct consequence of the trend. In this video, we will look at some of the edgiest cartoons that pioneered something new. We will refrain from including mainstream cartoons and deal only in the ones that we think were minor or major game changers. So sit back and enjoy this thrill ride and let us know in the comments which among these you'd like to watch. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Leader of a small band of E-frame pilots dedicated to freeing humanity from Neo-Sapien rule. We are the Exo Squad. Exo Squad, 1993 to 1995. In the year 2119, humanity faces an impending interplanetary war with Neo Sapiens from Mars. By this point, humans have colonized Venus and Mars, and have also created the aforementioned new species, the Neo Sapiens, who function as a race of slaves. However, the constant oppression has led the Neo Sapiens to revolt, and Earth is now battling space pirates. And not see us. We must hit them while they are vulnerable. Phaeton, the Martian Neo-Sapien governor, sees this as an opportunity to wage a full-blown war on Earth and its inhabitants. The show revolves around Able Squad's adventures in the backdrop of this war, a unit of elite soldiers who wear highly advanced and lethal exosuits called E-frames. The fusion pack. First off, kudos to you if you remember this show. It's considered by many as one of the best action cartoons that came out in the 90s and was axed before its time. And why not? Exo Squad was made as a response to Japanese animes of the time. It was hardly a cartoon made for young children. It had darker themes than an 8 year old could comprehend. The show was a realistic take on war and its outcomes. There were carefully planned battle strategies, deaths, treachery, rebellions, and darker concepts like the psychological effect of war on people and their lives. As an action cartoon, it had all the necessary ingredients, with space soldiers donning unique and personalized exosuits to fight battles and go on many other adventures. However, the show aired in difficult and unpopular slots, even at 6 in the morning in a few cities, leading to a decrease in viewing numbers. The cartoon was cancelled after its second season, leaving the story on cliffhanger at the end of the 52nd episode. The Real Adventures of Johnny Quest 1996-1997 Johnny Quest is a computer whiz who, along with his friends, accompanies his father Dr. Benton Quest to exotic locations where the kids investigate strange events and mysteries. Twelve, log on. Subject, Johnny Quest. Countdown? Six, five, four, three. They also get to travel to a virtual realm called Quest World, where they indulge in solving puzzles and uncovering secrets and fight bad guys in order to evade life-threatening situations. This show is a continuation of the 1964 series Johnny Quest and the 1986 series The New Adventures of Johnny Quest and was produced by Hanna-Barbera. The show's original creator Peter Lawrence wanted this incarnation to be more realistic and believable than their original cartoons, and so he used locations like the airstrips of Nazca and the ruins of Teotihuacan. 
but Hanna-Barbera wanted less believable mysteries which were in line with the original cartoons, and the rift resulted in Lawrence getting fired and new writers being brought in. The project was in development hell, and a separate series planned called The New Johnny Quest was palled, with the episodes for that season being released as the second season for this one. The chaotic result was a bizarre fiasco, with the second season looking and feeling extremely different. It's Johnny! I swear, Ben. That boy could jump into a lake and come out dry. However, for people looking for a nostalgic walk down memory lane, this is a great show with exploits and adventures on par with that of its predecessors. Impressively, the creators were mindful enough to age the characters by a few years so that they can make more of the action and fighting. However, some fans objected to the change. The show seemed to address the accusations that the previous version faced, such as xenophobia, sexism, and racism. The animation is visually brilliant, with the use of CGI creating a cinematic spectacle out of the quest world sequences, and the fight scenes with Medusa and Surd becoming an absolute treat. But despite all the upgrades and changes, the program couldn't generate the desired ratings or viewership and was axed after the second season. Biker Mice from Mars 1993 to 1996 Once Mars was a thriving planet brimming with natural resources and a humanoid mice population. Hey, I smell Plutarchia. All hell broke loose when the Plutarchians, a race of carnivorous, worm-eating, foul-smelling fish humanoids, arrived and plundered all of the planet's resources in order to take them back to their own dying home planet. Throttle, Moto, and Vinny are three Martian mice who managed to find a spaceship and came to Earth, which the Plutarchians are planning to attack next. Exterminate them! Kick it, bros! These mice love biking and using interesting weapons like cestus, lasers, flares, and even a bionic arm. The three will need to join forces to save Earth from the Plutarchians and hope that someday they could return to Mars. Heavy metal, heavy action, and kids cartoon combine in this memorable show created by Rick Ungar. Many don't know that Marvel Productions produced the first season. Yeah, the same Marvel you're thinking of. Marvel Comics also published a three-issue series in the 90s, and why not? I mean humanoid mice who live by a small and simple code, brains, bros, bikes. And fight big, bad, smelly aliens using cybernetic weapons? We're sold. These muscle mice fight aliens, robots, and other monsters in style and with grace. This is one of the earliest cartoons to include themes of climate change and environmental degradation. While it didn't transform kids into Greta Thunberg, it did manage to bring the issue into homes and raise whatever little awareness it could. In 2006, the concept returned to TV screens with the same name in a 28-episode series. This revived series was a continuation, but added more antagonists in the form of cat-like humanoids called Catatonians. Extreme Ghostbusters 1997 a few years ago, Dr. Egon Spengler and his colleagues formed a group that hunted ghosts for a living. However, the absence of supernatural activity in the city led the team members to look for other opportunities, and they all went their different ways with the exception of Dr. Egon Spengler, who now lives in a firehouse with his friend Slimer, studying paranormal activities and teaching a group of young students at a local college. When new paranormal incidents start to surface, he recruits students Kylie Griffin, Eduardo Rivera, Garrett Miller, Roland Jackson, and his secretary Janine Melnitz as an all-new team of Ghostbusters. The team also includes Slimer, the ever-hungry ghost. <gasps> Together they determine to search New York and hunt ghosts. After the success of the 1986 show The Real Ghostbusters, producers felt that there was enough juice in the story to make another series. The result was Extreme Ghostbusters, a revamped continuation with Next Generation Ghostbusters. As a horror cartoon, it was genuinely spooky even by the standards of young teenagers, while the supernatural comedy was funny and gritty. What's commendable is that the show contained heavier action and more serious plots, aiming for an older audience than its predecessors. Yeah. 
Sadly though, this is what led to the show's demise. Poor scheduling meant that the show aired to a largely preschool audience, despite being aimed at an elder demographic, a blunder that resulted in poor ratings leading to the show's cancellation after its first season. Skeleton Warriors 1994 In a fictional planet called Luminaire, Prince Lightstar and Baron Dark fight to take control of the Lightstar Crystal that powers the city of Luminous City and gives superhuman powers. In one of his attempts to steal the crystal, Baron Dark manages to get one half while Prince Lightstar and his Legion of Light safeguard the other half. With the crystal's powers, Baron Dark is able to turn others into undead skeleton warriors like himself. The Legion of Light must fight Baron Dark and his skeletal minions to save Luminous City from darkness. I don't even know where to begin. Back in the 90s, there were sci fi action shows and there were horror cartoons. Skeleton Warriors was a breath of fresh air as it blended these two genres, giving us something to really cherish. It was a visual treat and had superb fight sequences, cool vehicles, lots of bone crushing, and in air fights. Everything from the theme song to the graceful sword fights screamed its status as a classic 90s show. A little harder. Ah! This is a fine mess! It could have been the next big thing, but unfortunately, it couldn't quite garner the right numbers, so the producers crushed it in cold blood. Never before did we see scores of the titular skeleton warriors fire lasers and guns while riding cruiser motorcycles. So many skulls and ribs were crushed that one might question the sanity of its creators and writers. The cartoon was aimed at a very niche audience, with its dark and violent undertones, so much so that it became economically unviable. In addition, its toy line failed to develop a fan base. Godzilla the Series 1998 This show follows the events of the 1998 film. Dr. Nick Tatopoulos finds an unhatched egg after the nest of Mother Godzilla is airily bombarded by the United States Air Force. As he accidentally stumbles and breaks the egg, a baby Godzilla hatches from it and assumes him to be its mother. Let's not do anything hasty here, okay little fella? Following this, Dr. Tatopoulos leads a research team called the Humanitarian Environmental Analysis Team, which comprises of scientists and US officials. After the events of the film, strange monsters have started cropping up across the world, and it seems all they know how to do is wreak havoc and destruction. Nick and his team rely on the baby Godzilla as their ultimate weapon to fight against these monsters. The show was actually better received by Godzilla fans than the film, because it was closer to Toho's Godzilla franchise. It packed great action, story, and monster vs. monster fights in all its episodes and became an immediate favorite of kids of all ages. However, the action was sometimes too violent for younger audiences and was not really child friendly. Unlike the monster in the live action movie, the animated Godzilla was not just a violent killing machine trying to save its eggs and its independent thinking closer resembled the instincts of an apex predator. Like the original Godzilla, this version could emit the classic radioactive beams from its mouth and didn't hesitate from making a mess to save Nick and the Earth, which it thought was its nest. The cartoon ran for two magnificent seasons, but eventually our radioactive kaiju was forced to succumb to the power of its distant brethren, Pokemon and Digimon, who had started taking the prime Saturday morning schedules. Conan the Adventurer 1992 TV series Conan is a wandering warrior who hails from the ancient mythological city of Samaria. One day he witnesses a meteor shower which he dubs Fiery Tears. Look grandfather, the fiery tears are made of metal. He collects the celestial objects and brings them to his father who is a blacksmith. Conan's father creates various weapons and tools from the metal of the meteorites, which he calls the Star Metal. The greatest creation is the sword that he builds, which can open gateways to different realms and make the bearer practically unkillable. 
However, an evil sorcerer named Rath Aemon finds out about the secrets of the star metal and the powers it holds. Conan's adventures thus begin as he fights off the serpent-faced sorcerer. Those who see the true face of Rathamon must... As per Robert E. Howard's Conan, or Marvel Comics Conan, the character is a ruthless and rather immoral warrior, whose heroic tasks were somewhat overshadowed by the less than righteous methods he used to complete them. The cartoon series couldn't show Conan's true personality, as it was quite adult, so they diluted his character and toned down his murderous and thieving traits. Conan fans weren't pleased with this, but the cartoon was popular among children because it showed a hulking man fighting bad guys with age-old weapons and the sheer brute force of his muscular body. Having said that, the creators remained largely loyal to Howard's original literature, the result being engaging stories and characters. It remained one of the best sword and sorcery cartoons of the age and competed well with its contemporaries like He-Man and Dungeons and Dragons. In 1994, Sunbow Entertainment released Conan and the Young Warriors, which was a direct sequel to Conan the Adventurer. Sworn enemies, how dare you do their bidding? Don't even think about it, ladies. Wildcats Covert Action Teams, 1994. Wildcats centers around two prehistoric alien races at war. The good Cherubim fight against the evil race of Daemonites. It's a universal and age-old war that has to be fought for the protection of Earth. The major villain is Hellspont, who is the leader of the Daemonites, while the cyborg Spartan leads the covert action team. A trap mean anything to you? Precisely, Wildcats. <laughs> The Wildcats comics were published by Image Comics in 1992, and later, DC Comics bought the rights. However, the comics were fairly popular since the very beginning of their publication, and so David Wise developed the cartoon series for CBS. It was clubbed together with other cartoons in the Action Zone block, with the likes of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Skeleton Warriors. My Caribbean friends, always coming to the party just a little too late. The show ran for 13 episodes but was cancelled because it drifted away from the comics, and that killed the charm of these wild cats. However, it was and still is a visual treat to viewers who dig action, irrespective of that action being wrapped around some loose plots and some really dodgy dialogue. Highlander, the animated series, 1994 to 1996. After a meteorite collides with Earth, causing a series of nuclear reactions, humanity is almost wiped out, with only the immortal Highlanders remaining. They pledge to stop fighting for an eternal prize and vow to save what remains, calling themselves Jeditors. However, one of the immortals named Cortan still seeks the prize and wishes to dominate Earth. He succeeds, but there's a prophecy according to which one last Highlander will be born and will defeat Corton in order to free the world from his dictatorial rule. You did it, Quentin! They're free, thanks to you! But I could have learned so much from Mangus. Highlander the Animated Series is a loose spin-off and sequel of the 1986 film of the same name. Much like Conan the Barbarian's character, Highlander was made for adult viewership, or at least college kids. However, the extreme cartoon creators of the 90s saw fit to bring these stories into the animated world and make them suitable for kids. This experiment didn't always prove successful because if you remove the basic features of gritty and dark literature and make it morally and politically correct, then you're doing something absolutely criminal. This series did however do quite well on the action front, using non-lethal means of fighting like martial arts and simple swords play. Pick up your sword. Give me those slaves! The visual aesthetics were vibrant and engaging, but the plot lacked continuity and created confusion. Then again, if you watch this show independently of the movie, then it may just win your heart.
Consider this party crashed, Dr. X. Action Man, 1995. Action Man wakes up suffering from amnesia. He doesn't remember anything, but is conveniently appointed the leader of a team called the Action Force, tasked with bringing down the notorious Dr. X and his Council of Doom. Actually, she's going up. Later, Action Man finds out that Dr. X is the reason behind his amnesia and probably the killer of his parents. The one thing about Action Man is that you get exactly what you signed up for. Killed, have I? Hasbro released the Action Man toy line and its popularity led Deke Entertainment to create this cartoon. Action Man was an above average character, but the show was undoubtedly stolen by its villain Dr. X. He was clearly the most developed character of the show and was a staple 90s villain. Once we home in on your computer signals from Station Extreme, BOOM! With his iconic hair and his army of skull men, Dr. X is always a step ahead of Action Man stealing nuclear warheads and Russian cybernetic androids, and Action Man's team seemed a little unidimensional in comparison. The cartoon was special in two respects. The first being that the creators didn't shy away from going into space. Secondly, it was a cartoon that used animation, CGI, and live action sequences, a unique approach that added greatly to the thrill factor. Sadly, this aspect also made it difficult for younger kids to grasp all that was happening, and the show was prematurely cancelled. However, it's a highly recommended series for those who want to see something new in the animated world. Heroes. Now we have the dragon. The Savage Dragon, 1995 to 1996. Lieutenant Frank Darling of the Chicago Police Department finds a large humanoid creature with green skin and a finned head. The creature has no memory of his past, but that shouldn't be a problem as he has super strength and an accelerated healing ability. He soon joins the police force and fights against crime under the name Savage Dragon, facing off against the city's biggest criminals, including the mysterious Overlord. Overlord wants to take over the city and wants our green hero to join an organization of supervillains called Vicious Circle. Together, we shall enslave the humans and rule Chicago! Yeah! When Overlord abducts Lieutenant Darling and Savage Dragon's partner, Officer Alex Wilde, he must struggle to save them and uncover a huge conspiracy. The cartoon is an animated adaption of the Image Comics character of the same name, which was created by the legendary writer and artist, Eric Larson. You're being arrested. For what? What happened? You happened. <laughs> It's a justified and honest adaptation of the comic, packed with all the action you expect, flipping, jumping, kicking, and headbutting. Despite not featuring the nudity scene in the comic, the sensuality and a reasonable amount of violence is carried over. Interestingly, the 21st episode is a crossover with three other famous cartoons of the period. Any guesses which? Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm, and Wing Commander Academy. This great idea was hatched by the USA Action Extreme Team of the USA Network. The Savage Dragon is an excellent piece of work as an action cartoon series, though the execution and production is a little lacking. In Eric's words, it was an exercise in frustration. The episodes feel independent in themselves, and sometimes they fail to maintain continuity of plot and story. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. This is but a setback. I have waited thousands of years to conquer this planet. I can be patient a little longer.